Okay, so we're doing every Tuesday a live cooking demo that's focused on seasonal ingredients. Um, and for today's demo, we are making a pumpkin cranberry granola. So we're, we're using very fall inspired flavors here with this granola. So we'll get started just on making the granola because I do want to show you that it's very simple to make your own homemade granola. Plus it makes your kitchen smell yummy. So it's a win-win. Um, okay, so first things first is my oven is preheated to 325. We want this on a, you know, a lower temperature because we want it to cook and get nice and crisp without the oats burning. So we want to keep it on a lower temperature here. Similarly to, you know, just baking in general, we keep things on a lower temp. So we're going, we have some wet ingredients and some dry ingredients. So just like with anything with baking, we're keeping our wet ingredients and our dry ingredients separate at first, and then we will um, combine them together. And then we spread the granola mixture out onto a baking sheet and put that in the oven. And that's how we'll get granola. So granola starts with our oats. So we're using rolled oats or old fashioned oats, two cups, And this granola recipe as written will make like five cups of granola, but it will keep for a while stored in, you know, an airtight container or jar. So we want two cups of rolled or old fashioned oats and the rolled or old fashioned oats are, are less processed than something like instant or quick cooking oats. So we're going to get the most um, nutrients, the most fiber um, from the whole uh, rolled oats. And they give us the best texture too for the granola. That's what you'll typically find even in a pre-made granola is the, the base is the rolled or old fashioned oats. Okay, then to our dry mixture, we're also adding in half a cup of chopped pecans and half a cup of pumpkin seeds. Shelled pumpkin seeds, so they look like this and just pecans that I just roughly chopped up okay and then we want a half a teaspoon of cinnamon and a half a teaspoon of salt now you could um, season this it's funny to say season for granola but that's what we're doing when we're adding spices we're seasoning something um, you could use like a pumpkin spice um, blend if you wanted to use that instead of just cinnamon or you could add some nutmeg in here with the cinnamon and kind of play around some ground cloves are also good in here to give it those like warm fall pumpkin spicy kind of vibes and a half a teaspoon of, cin of cinnamon of salt we want salt to add um to balance out the sweetness so usually in most baking recipes too, you'll have a pinch of salt um, added in there somewhere in the in the baking mixture. All right, so that's it for our dry ingredients. Also, when it comes to the nuts and the seeds, I'm using pecans and pumpkin seeds. You can sub out the pecans um, for almonds, pistachios, walnuts. Really, you can kind of sub in whatever um, whatever you like there. Okay, so we're just, just mixing this up with my hands and just setting the dry ingredients aside. Okay. So for our wet ingredients, we're using coconut oil or butter. You could use either or. You could also use a neutral, a neutral flavored oil, um, like an organic canola oil or... Um, like sunflower or safflower oil if you wanted to just use a regular oil here. Um, I want to make a note on coconut oil because that's another thing that tends to have a lot of, um, you know, a lot of uh, different, different opinions and things. Um, so I'll just give you a quick take, a quick take on the coconut oil that it is, um, comes from coconut right so we know it's coming from a fruit it's coming from coconut but it is a saturated fat so it is solid at room temperature just like butter 
but because it comes from a plant, it doesn't have cholesterol in it. So that's what would make it different from butter. So if cholesterol is an issue for you, um, coconut oil might be a better alternative to butter. However, grass-fed butter also has health benefits that aren't um, regularly talked about, but organic grass-fed butter does have other health benefits as well, like providing omega-3 fatty acids. Um, so again, I can't give you any you know, personalized advice here, but that's what I can tell you is that coconut oil and butter are both saturated fats. Butter, of course, comes from an animal, so it has cholesterol. Coconut oil comes from a coconut, which is a fruit, and it does not have cholesterol. There are two types of coconut oil. You can get a refined or unrefined. The unrefined means that it has been less processed, which means it will have a stronger coconut flavor. So in something like the granola, that could actually be nice because it adds a little bit of coconut flavor. If you don't like coconut, get the refined coconut oil and that will have um, almost no coconut flavor. It's very neutral flavored. We're going to melt the coconut oil with maple syrup and that's going to be the wet ingredients for our granola. So we're just using a small saucepan and I'm adding a quarter cup, I'll just do it over this one, because it's closer. We're doing a quarter cup of coconut oil. And a third of a cup of maple syrup. Okay. And so we just wanna mix these together just to melt down the coconut oil or butter if that's what you're using. If you are using a liquid oil, like I mentioned, a neutral flavored oil, you can skip this step because everything's already in liquid form, so you don't have to heat the oil with the, um, with the maple syrup. Okay. So while we're doing this, in starting to talk about our conversation on sugar, of course here we're using maple syrup as our sweetener. So one of the, you know, the first thing that, that I'll mention is that when you're making something like granola yourself or anything, you know, any time that you are making something yourself, which is one of the things that can make you feel empowered, right, by gaining some confidence in the kitchen, it makes you empowered and allows you to take control back over what goes into your body, right, over your health, over the things that you're eating. So one of those things is to be able to control how much sugar goes into something. So with something like granola that can, like I said, be a hidden source of added sugar, making it yourself allows you to modify how much sugar you're actually adding in there. So we're using a third a cup of maple syrup. And like I said, this granola is gonna make like five cups of granola. So when you think about how much sweetener is actually in each serving of granola, whoop, I'm dripping on there. it's very little, right? So that's just one of the things that I wanted to mention here is just about being able to kind of have more control over how much sugar is in what you're eating. So anytime that, this doesn't just mean always making everything from scratch either. This could be something also like buying plain yogurt instead of flavored yogurt, right? So flavored yogurts are also very high in sugar usually. There are, you know, they're making some now on the market that are a little bit lower in added sugars. But, okay, I'm just gonna turn this off now. So all we're looking for here, sorry, I'm on a tangent now. All we're looking for here is that all of the, um, the coconut oil or the butter that you're using is just all melted. And then we're gonna transfer it from the pot into a glass or metal bowl to let it cool just slightly. Just don't want it to be burning hot when you mix it with everything else. Okay. Okay, so like I was saying, something like yogurt, if you buy plain yogurt versus a fruit flavored yogurt, 
you can control how much sweetener goes into it. So if you buy plain yogurt, you can sweeten it with maple syrup or honey or a fruit jam, but whatever it is, you have control over how much is going in there. So something as simple as trying plain yogurt instead of a sweetened yogurt is an easy way to, you know, lessen your sugar, your added sugar intake. That's one simple thing that you can try to do. All right, so we have our dry ingredients in one bowl. We have our maple syrup and coconut oil that I melted down that's now in here. So to the rest of our, we're gonna add the rest of the wet ingredients into this bowl. So we have a third of a cup of canned pumpkin. And just um, a note, you wanna use canned pumpkin, not canned pumpkin pie filling. You'll see both. Um, the canned pumpkin pie filling is already pre-seasoned and pre-sweetened, so you want just canned pumpkin for this. So a third of a cup of canned pumpkin. one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Okay. I'm just gonna mix these all together. Okay, and pumpkin of course is a fall favorite ingredient. Similarly to what we talked about with the butternut squash, that bright orange color is a lot of vitamins and minerals, right? A lot of vitamin A, antioxidant properties. So you can see the pumpkin really like dissolves into here. So it's not like you're getting blobs of pumpkin in the granola. It just adds some flavor and it's adding some nutrient uh, value to the granola as well. Okay, so you just want to make sure this is like pretty cooled before we add it into the dry ingredients. So we're just going to pour these wet ingredients right in here with our dry ingredients. Okay. And then I'm just going to use a rubber spatula to coat everything really well. So you just want to keep kind of flipping and folding the wet mixture in there until the oats are nicely well coated. Everything is, you know, evenly distributed in here. It smells so yummy. So this is it essentially to make your own granola. You really only need not even all of the ingredients that I just used. You really just need the oats, a little pinch of salt, some kind of sweetener, some kind of fat, whether that be coconut oil, butter, or some neutral flavored oil, or olive oil if you want the flavor of olive oil in your granola. Um, that's really all you need, right? So I would suggest having some sort of spices in there. Cinnamon and vanilla are usually, um, you know, good options, but you can play around with adding in different toppings, um, you know, different kinds of nuts and seeds, different kinds of, you know, whatever, whatever you want to, you want to toss in here, but really the base for a granola is just a few simple um, pantry ingredients. Okay, so this is nice and well mixed and coated here. So I have a large baking sheet. We're just going to spread this out on the baking sheet that's lined with parchment paper. Okay. And with the granola, the more you leave it um, like packed together, the more it will be like a clumpy granola with you know more that's like you break in pieces rather than. Um, you know, more like loose, crumbly granola. So you can decide how, you know, how packed you want it to be on the tray. 
if you like the kind of clumpy granola, you can use a smaller baking sheet also so that um, you know it really stays nice and, and clumped together. We're gonna put this in the oven, like I said, at 325 for like 20 minutes, and then we're gonna give it a little toss and put it back in for another like 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. You just want it to all, you just don't want it like really overlapping because then parts of it will stay really mushy and not get crispy. So you wanna try to really flatten it out I'll show you. You want to really try to flatten it out, but you can keep it, like I said, closer together so that it comes out more clumpy if that's how you like it. Okay. All right, so that's it. So our granola is ready to go in the oven. The cranberry part of the granola comes at the end. So we have some dried cranberries, but those are gonna get tossed in when it's, um, after it's cooked. Okay. So I'm gonna keep this up. So this is going into the oven for 20 minutes. We will check on that. Um, like I said, we're gonna mix it up and put it back in the oven for a little bit longer. Um, okay, so that was the first time where I'm gonna pull this out. I'm gonna give it a shake. Okay, so this is what we're looking at now. I'm gonna give it a stir. We're gonna give it a stir and then lay it right back out on the baking sheet. Okay. And it's going back in the oven for another um, 10 or 15 minutes just until it's nice and golden and it's getting crispy. Another thing just to note about the granola too is that it will crisp up the, um, more as it sits. So if it still seems soft when it comes out of the oven, it is, it will crisp as it sits. You wanna let it sit a bit and cool down before you package it into you know, a, a container that you're gonna store it in. Let me pull the granola out of the oven. And, okay. So you can see if you can tell what it really it's nice and browned now so I'm gonna just let this sit I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit and then once it's cooled down I'll break it up into clumps we'll mix in the dried cranberries and that's it and it'll get stored in an airtight container or um, or jar um, and it will keep for for um, you know for a little while <laughs>